Welcome everybody to another episode of Channel 23 Lockdown News. That's right, today I got a grip of stories coming your way. A couple GDs becoming hackers and in prison, man, you ain't gonna believe this. Got some inmates that were about to sue a facility over something wild, man, you ain't gonna believe it. Also, we got some news from old Suge Knight about P. Diddy. I don't care if he's called P. Diddy or Diddy nowadays, man. I know him as Puffy. That's right. We're going to talk about it a little bit, as well as a few other things. So prepare yourself, ladies and gentlemen. If you're into this type of content, all things lock up and crime related, then this is exactly where you need to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. So the first story, we're traveling all the way up north to New York. Six inmates at the medium security men's prison in Woodburn in upstate New York sued the State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision over not being allowed to view the eclipse. The inmates argue that denying them the right to see the total eclipse would violate their religious rights. Man, oh man, these guys are getting brilliant behind them bars. Ain't nothing gonna stop them from seeing this astronomical event. The lawyers in the case said that the corrections department will allow the inmates to see it. If I were to guess, they probably seen that they were definitely going to lose that one in the courtroom. Say, so, you know what, everybody just go get them some glasses and let them watch it. Don't even warn them about being blinded. But the lawyers said, we are pleased that in response to our lawsuit, New York State has entered into a binding settlement agreement that will allow our six clients to view the solar eclipse in accordance with their sincerely held religious beliefs, they said in a statement. It seems like only the six people that sue are going to get to see this miraculous event. It continues saying the lawsuit filed last week was withdrawn after the agreement. Also in the lawsuit, it says eclipse glasses are to be provided. Safety first, even in the penitentiary. But this is the thing, they filed this puppy just late last week. And they already got an answer. That's the fastest I've ever seen anything move in the DOC. You know why it moves so fast? Is because the eclipse is coming fast. There's no getting that eclipse back. You can't you can't give it back to me. And if they were to have missed it, then yeah, the lawsuit, if you were to ask me, would have changed dramatically. And they probably would have walked away with millions. But that's not going to be the case. Those six inmates are going to have a remarkable view. Next up, let's talk about Puffy really quick. We're not going to dive in like most people do. Just read a little bit on this article. And here's an image of Puffy in his Puffy suit. Never forget that suit. Me going to Burlington to try to find it. Never did. That's when I realized music videos is nothing like real life. But the article says Suge Knight, the Death Row Records founder and central figure in hip-hop's and famous East Coast-West Coast feud in the 1990s issued an anonymous warning to his former rival Sean Diddy Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, in a phone call from prison last week. Chug goes on to say in this phone call that I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger because you know the secrets who's involved in the little secret room you guys are participating in. Oh, man, man, oh, man. He said this in a call to his team, Breakbeat Media, the production company behind his Collect Call podcast. You can't stop Suge, man. You can't stop him. Probably smoking his cigar in the cell while he's on the collect call. <laughs> Every single time, I'm not going to lie, someone brings up Suge Knight, that's exactly what I see in my mind. Dude puffing that cigar, man, like a boss. But Suge continues saying, you know they're going to get you if they can, he added. It says while he took a couple digs at Combs, questioning his masculinity and encouraging him to drop his love moniker if he ever ends up behind bars. I did a live stream when his house got raided, right? And I said, man, if, if he takes that love little thing to the prison, people are going to make it come to life for real. It's funny to hear Suge say it as well. Knight's full remarks are available on Breakbeat's YouTube channel if y'all want to go check it out. I just want to bring this to your attention that even Suge is watching everything unfold and probably waiting. That feud from 1990s ain't never died. You know, and that's how it is with a lot of situations between people, man. Even though, you know, life keeps on going, it don't mean that the issue's over. When I see you, you better give me my $20. Now, the next story is coming from the penitentiary. It's not too extreme, but at the same time, it is. It says, prison facility in Fremont County loses water service throughout the entire complex. Now, yeah, that sounds crazy, right? That's all we got to drink in themselves is the water, but... <laughs> I'm here to shed a different kind of light on this situation. That's probably what they started thinking after about a few hours of it going down. Like, what am I going to drink? 
But when they first woke up and realized all the water's off, I can guarantee they thought it was a shakedown coming their way. I'll break down exactly what I mean by that in a second. But it says, The Cannon Complex, a collection of prison facilities in Fremont County, has canceled all visits after losing water service throughout the entire campus. Officials said crews are working to repair a major leak in the water system and it could take three to four days to complete the repairs. This situation actually happened to me in jail where the water line broke or something and nothing was working. Toilet, sink, none of that, right? And the first thing the inmates thought was a shakedown's coming. So people started doing all kinds of crazy stuff, trying to get their contraband out, even down to throwing it straight out their cell window. But it turned out that it was just a leak and <laughs> they weren't doing nothing. But anybody that doesn't know, that is the first sign that the COs are coming in to shake down the cells is turning off the water. Because they don't want nobody flushing none of the contraband on the toilet and they wouldn't be able to catch them with. Well, I thought this was a pretty wild story. I just want to bring it to your attention. Not too long. But at the same time, bringing awareness is key. Hopefully they get those water pipes up and running. Because we need all the water we can guzzle in those cells. As the creator of the Wardenberger says... That's what you get three times a day and you get all the water you can drink. It's very nutritious. It's good for you. It has lots of fiber in it. Yeah, that's right. We're back to the Warden Burger. And I forgot to mention, when the water went out for us, they just brought around a bunch of juice. It was either the pouches of juice or they just brought a whole cooler in there already whipped up. So I'm sure they're getting hydrated some kind of way in there. Don't be worried, anybody that's got someone locked up in those facilities. Now, I've been covering prison and lockup stories for a very long time, almost a decade, and it seems like when I've done Hurt It All, another story comes out that just blows my mind. This one's coming from Alabama once again, but it ain't about inmate on inmate homicide for once. It's about a prison group, organization, or gang, whatever you like to call it, called the Gangster Disciples. I ain't gonna lie either, I'm not a part of none of that stuff, you know, but they got a pretty cool name. But it says a 44-year-old member of the Gangster Disciples gang has been sentenced to federal prison for his role in a prison-based conspiracy targeting retailers throughout the country. I know it sounds a little boring, but wait till you hear how he was doing this or how they were doing this. It says Otis Big O Bowers was sentenced to 235 months, more than 19 years in prison. He is the last defendant involved in a wide-ranging scam to be sentenced. According to the joint announcement Thursday by Northern District Alabama U.S. Attorney Prim Escalona and the U.S. Secret Service agent in charge, Mr. Patrick Davis. Man, oh man, when the Secret Service gets involved. Whew. Smoke becomes a bit thicker, I guess you could say, in the courtroom. To me, in my mind, I'd be saying there just ain't no hope left. I'm as good as done. Four doors on a microwave by the time I get out. According to court documents between September 2020 and May 2022, Poole Sr. led a group of inmates housed in Donaldson Correctional Facility who used telephone scams called skits to trick Home Depot employees into activating prepaid gift cards. How does that even happen, man? And how do these people be falling for these schemes? It says skit runners use contraband cell phones, social engineering techniques, and spoofing technology to trick retailers into transferring funds to inmates under fraudulent pretenses. Look, man, I said it in one of my stories earlier that these inmates are becoming brilliant behind bars. This just goes to show you that they'll adapt to anything. Just like when you first walk into jail, you're going to have to adapt to the whole new environment, being surrounded by nothing but men with different personalities. Well, same goes for the criminals that just want to keep on breaking the law. They're going to learn, adapt, and move with the time of day. And nowadays, that time is technology. It don't stop not even in prison, ladies and gentlemen. They'll keep on advancing, and their crimes will become more elaborate. Bradshaw was a skip runner who was housed at Donaldson for most of the period charged in the incident. In a private Facebook messages, Bradshaw referred to himself as a hacker and a professional phone scam artist. You know, when I was working at a sub shop, I told people I was a sandwich artist. Made it seem much more sophisticated. But it says, for example, Bradshaw told a Facebook contact that he was the best scam artist this side of Mississippi. <laughs> man. This guy gets the gold medal for scammies. It goes on to say that Bradshaw worked for members of the Gangster Disciples. A violent national criminal gang founded in Chicago and active across the U.S. including Alabama. Bradshaw targeted Home Depot and other retailers with skit calls. He would then provide the gift card information he obtained to other members. 
of the conspiracy who would purchase products or take steps to liquidate the cards. In exchange for his work as a skit runner, Bradshaw received protection from the gangster disciples. So Bradshaw is just doing all this stuff to make sure he doesn't get got. And Poole Sr. explained all this in a series of messages he sent to a co-conspirator. I go to pay the dude that be ordering shit. He's on ice, so I gotta keep him elevated. And I gotta pay this dude to keep shit coming. Yo, man, the feds or uh, Secret Service is reading this like open and shut case, fellas. Once again, these guys are speaking over the open airwaves. Man, oh man, see, this is the thing. Uh, in order to commit crimes behind bars, you gotta have some kind of communication with people. And a lot of these guys think that they're in some kind of hidden account that would never get traced to them. But when the Secret Service or the feds or anything along those lines really start digging... You'll find out exactly who, where, what it was. That's just how it goes, man. It's completely traceable. Everything, if you were to ask me, for the most part. One of the ways in which members of the conspiracy smuggled contraband into Donaldson and the A-Doc facilities was by paying bribes to correctional staff. It is what it is, though. You know, if you're to ask me, and I'm a gambling man, I put my whole house on it. They might be able to slow this down, clean up shop a little bit, but it will never stop. Another round of inmates will come right in and start up something else just like they did. Probably going to Lowe's this time. Who knows? In March 2022, Bowers and Poole Sr. worked together to smuggle controlled substances and other contraband into Donaldson in what they call fence play. Their efforts were interrupted, however, by law enforcement who confronted a group of co-conspirators trespassing at state property at Donaldson. After being confronted by ADOC officers, the subjects dropped multiple bags containing contraband and fled into a wooded area near the facility. ADOC officers also recovered a Ruger pistol, 15 rounds of 9mm ammunition, an extended gun magazine, 5 pocket knives, and 1 canister of pepper spray. They also found cell phones, cell phone chargers, cell phone cables, a mobile hotspot, memory cards, SIM cards, scales, lighters, individually wrapped cigarellos. Damn! Also, they found some cigar wrappers, shoes, jewelry, and a load of other controlled substances. The U.S. Secret Service Cyber Fraud Task Force investigated the case. And this is another thing a lot of people don't know. You know, the police, FBI, CIA, Secret Service, whatever you want to call it. Each group has a cyber department that specializes in this online activity. That's what they do, man, you know? So just like inmates, you know, uh, law enforcement adapt and change up as well. But when it comes down to Alabama prison system, this is just like a little chip in the iceberg. There's so many issues going on in their prisons, man, that I can't see it ever being fixed. But that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen, for Channel 23 Lockdown News. Reporting pre-recorded from the compound. But hopefully y'all enjoyed today's rundown of stories. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts. Not gonna lie, it's one of my favorite parts of the video. Reading what y'all have to say. But stay tuned, of course. You know I got plenty more content coming your way. And as always, y'all be easy, be safe, and more importantly than anything, stay free.